Hi guys, my name is Tom Ovenden and in this quick tutorial I'm going to go over how we can take quite complex vector graphics that you may have downloaded from online and use Illustrator to split these images up into their component parts so that we can then animate these objects individually in After Effects. And we'll be demonstrating all of this by making this awesome animation of these cogs rotating in the brain in just 10 minutes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is come over to Vecteasy and grab ourselves an awesome vector graphic. So we're going to use this one today by Oren Ebsemen. I'll add the link to this particular vector graphic so that you can follow along in the description. Uh, and this is uh, available under Vecteasy's free license. So as long as we attribute the author, we can use this for free in our work. So we're just going to hit the free download button here. Uh, and this will make sure that we can select the free license and we'll download it. Once you've downloaded the license, we're just going to come over to wherever you've um, saved it uh, and we're going to unzip this file, which is what I've done here. And inside this file, we'll notice that there's three files within it uh, and we're going to go for this EPS document. So if we just right click on the EPS file and we'll open it with Illustrator, ignore any warning messages that come up. Uh, and this is what you should be faced with when we open the file up in Illustrator. Now we're going to be using two tools inside Illustrator today. We're going to be using the color swatch and we're going to be using the layers panel. So if you can't find these at all, just come up to the window pane up here and you should be able to find the layers um, option just there and the swatches option just there. So if you just select those, a tick will appear and they should open up for you. Now the first thing we'll notice if we select V and the shortcut key on the keyboard just to make sure we've got our selection tool and we click on the image. Uh, this is just one image at the moment. So it's all one unique layer. What we're going to need to do is split this out so that each of these cogs in this layer is an individual layer in its own right. So to do that, if we just come over to our layers panel over here and we just expand out a little arrow next to this layer, we'll see there's three groups inside this particular layer. Now, if we select the circle next to each one of these groups, we'll see in the main image there, it highlights the grouped images that we've got selected. So we're not going to need this one and we're not going to need the shadow. So we can just highlight it just here, click up here, and we're going to select delete group here. So we're going to delete that group and then just we'll select this little circle to make sure we're selecting the right one. And we're just going to hit delete group here. OK, so now we've got one group left inside our layer. And so if we expand out this group, we'll then expand out the next level. We'll see that actually all of our cogs are a compound path, all part of this same group. And so simply all we want to do is take this group of individual elements and we want to make them their own unique layers. So we're going to highlight this layer. We're going to come up to the three bars just here and we're going to come down to release to layers sequence just here. And we're going to click that. So clicking that immediately, you can see that now all of these are called layers in a sequential numbering system and they're still stored within layer two. So the next thing we're going to need to do is highlight the top layer come down all the way to the bottom, hold shift and highlight all of these layers. And we're just going to need to drag them outside of this layer within which they're nested. Which is when the blue line appears just there. And now we're going to let go. And we'll see that all these layers are now individual layers and they're outside of layer two, which is nested within layer one. So if we collapse layer one down, we can see that layer one is something in its own right. But now all of these individual cogs are individual layers. And if we select the little circle on the right hand side here, it means we can target individual cogs now, whereas before we could only target the whole image. OK, so if we look at layer one now and we expand that back out, we'll see that layer two, if we select layer two circle on the right hand side here, hasn't got anything in it. So we'll just come up to these three bars and we'll delete layer two. And this group within layer one now is the outline of the brain. OK, so far so good. So if at this stage we wanted to recolor each of these individual cogs, we could do so by just selecting the individual layer there, selecting this dot on the right hand side and then coming over to our swatches color panel. So we can see this individual cog here is selected. And if we select the fill here, opens up a selection color pane for us. So we could select red if we wanted to and we see it changes to red. Similarly, if we wanted to change the color of all of the layers simultaneously, so say, for example, we wanted all the cogs to be white, we can make sure that we come over to our layers panel, hold shift and click the bottom dot whilst we've got the top dot selected and it will select all of them down in a row there. See, they all become selected in the main pane. And then we can come up again to this same fill option, double click, select white or whatever color you want, click OK, and all of the cogs turn white. So if we click off of the cogs, we'll see they disappear because we've got a white background and they're now all filled white with no stroke, 
We know it's no stroke because this is the stroke symbol here, and it's a red line through a white outlined square. Okay, so the next thing to do for really good housekeeping is to rename all of our layers to something that means something to us. So if we come back over to our layers panel and we click the circle here to select the first layer, again, we're gonna hold our shift key, come to the bottom layer, layer 40, click that so that it highlights all of our cog layers. Now I've installed an additional script tool into my illustrator by uh, somebody called Tarantulo TV produced this and I'll provide a link to their video in the description. Absolutely fantastic little piece of scripting. It basically allows you to rename loads of layers simultaneously without having to rename them all individually, which saves you a lot of time, but we'll cover how to rename them individually in a second. But if now that we've got them all selected, if we come up to file, we come down to scripts and we come over to rename layers. This will only appear if you've gone through the Tarantulo TV YouTube video and installed the script that he's got on there. Um, but as I said, it's not essential. You can rename the layers individually. But we're gonna select rename layers here. We're gonna say that they're called layer and they're all sequentially numbered at the moment. So it will take the word layer and the next window will ask us what we want to replace it with. So we want to replace it with cog. We'll click okay and we'll see that now all of our layers have now been automatically renamed from three to 40. And this just helps us keep track of things in Illustrator. We'll now come up and we'll manually rename layer one by selecting it, double clicking on it, and we'll rename this to brain outline and hit enter. Okay, great. So we've got our outline of our brain as an individual layer, and we've got all of our cogs as individual layers too. We've recolored them to the colors we want them to appear to in After Effects. So now we're just gonna to need to come up to File, Save As, and we're gonna save this composition as an Illustrator file. So call it what we'd like. Make sure the format is Illustrator file, and then we're gonna hit Save. Click OK for the presets. Now we're ready to come across to After Effects. So we're just gonna create a new project, and we're gonna create a new composition. We're gonna call this something useful like Brain Cogs. We're gonna set the width and the height to 1920 by 1080 for standard dimensions, the frame rate to 25, and 15 seconds will do us fine for this animation with a background color of black. We'll click OK. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a solid layer so we can have our own background color. So we'll go layer, new, solid, just up here. This will open a dialog box so we can call it what we would like, but we're just gonna make sure initially that we're gonna set it to a width of 1920 and a height of 1080 to reflect our composition size. And then we're gonna select our color here. I'm gonna select a particular hex color code, click OK, we're gonna click OK. So now this solid's been created, it's been placed in its own solids folder over here in our project pane, and it's been added to our composition. Because we wanna keep everything tidy, we're just gonna create a folder over here and call it comps. That's been added to our solids folder, so I'm just gonna drag that out so that it's outside. And then I'm gonna put our composition inside the compositions folder. Next, because we're gonna bring in our Illustrator file, I'm just gonna create a new folder, call that Assets. And within the Assets folder, I'm gonna create another folder called Illustrator, just so that if there was a bigger project, we could actually keep all of our assets relatively organized from the outset. Okay, now we're ready to bring our Illustrator file into After Effects. So if we go to wherever we saved our Illustrator file, that's it just here, and we're just gonna drag that into our Projects folder. Now, this dialog box will open when you're importing an Illustrator file. And what's important to recognize here is that we're gonna keep it as import kind as footage, and we're gonna keep the layer options as merged layers. And we're just gonna click OK. Now over in our project pane, we'll notice that the Illustrator file has been brought into After Effects. So we're just gonna pop that in our Illustrator folder that we just created to keep it organized. And then we're gonna grab the Illustrator file and we're gonna bring it down to our composition and place it above our deep cyan solid color and we'll see that the object has now appeared in After Effects. Now at the moment, this Illustrator layer is still just one layer. It's not all of the individual cogs that we produced previously a second ago in Illustrator. Just gonna pop that back to where it was a second ago. So if at this stage we come and grab the corner, hold Shift to maintain the aspect ratio, and we enlarge it, and then we zoom in, we'll notice that it's started to become pixelated. So if this is the case for you as well, come over to your composition panel, and if I just zoom in over here, you'll notice this little star symbol. And if we hover over it, it says for vector layer, continuously rasterize. So next to our illustrator layer, we just need to make sure that this box is selected. So I'll just zoom back out, I'll press undo to put it back to the size it was, and then I'll select this little box over here next to the star symbol in our illustrator layer. And then I'll zoom back out again. And now if we enlarge the image whilst holding shift, 
maintains the aspect ratio, but it also keeps everything a nice crisp resolution as we would expect from a vector graphic. So if you're seeing a particularly rasterized or sort of pixelated image having imported an Illustrator file, just make sure that this little star symbol is selected next to that particular layer in After Effects, and it should maintain all of the crisp finish for you that you would expect from a vector graphic. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna turn this Illustrator layer into a composition so that we can then animate each of the individual cogs. So if we come over to our composition panel and we right click, we come down to create, and this option here, convert to layer comp. So we're gonna to wanna to select convert to layer comp, and we'll notice after we've selected it that this illustrator symbol here turns into a composition symbol. So this now tells us that we've turned our illustrator layer into a composition in its own right. So if we double click on this composition, it opens up here in our composition pane, and we'll see that each of these cogs is now represented by an individual AI layer that we can select. And this will now enable us to individually animate each of these cogs in After Effects. So if we just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So if we want to add a rotation to all of these individual cogs, we can do this quite simply. Now we could either adjust the rotation manually, or if we wanted them to perpetually rotate throughout the entire duration of our composition, we can do that quite easily by adding in an expression. So if we come to our first cog and we just hit the R shortcut key, we'll open up the rotation option in the composition panel. Now, if we hover our mouse over the stopwatch, we hold Alt on the keyboard and then click the stopwatch, we'll see these different options will open up. Now, if we come over to here where we can enter our expression and we write time, then the star, then 100, this will now rotate perpetually. So if we click off quickly to deselect it, and then make sure that we come and select the actual rotation option, not cog three here, but the rotation option. We zoom out and we hit Command C. And then we highlight the rest of the layers that we want to apply this same rotation expression to. So we'll do it for the first 24 layers. So I'll highlight them there and then hit Command V. This will paste this rotation expression across the, these next 23 layers. So now if we come to our timeline and we hit our spacebar, we'll see that some of these layers are now rotating. And we'll see that this rotation carries on in perpetuity for the whole time our composition exists for. Now, if we wanted the remaining layers, so from layer 25 all the way down to layer 40 to rotate in the opposite direction, we can come to cog 25, hit R for the shortcut key, hover over the rotation stopwatch, hold Alt and then click the rotation stopwatch and our same expression window will pop up. And this time we're going to write in time as before, star symbol, but we're gonna put minus 100. So this will effectively spin in the opposite direction over the same rate. Then we can deselect the layer, come back as we did before to the rotation option, hit command C, then select the remainder of our layers from 26 down to 40, holding shift to select them all, and then hit command V or control C, control V on a PC. Then if we deselect all of our layers, come back to our timeline and hit the space bar, we can now see that all of the cogs are moving, half of which in one direction and the other half in the opposite direction. So if we hit our space bar to stop that, and we come back to our original composition where this composition is embedded, zoom out and hit the space bar, we can see that all of these cogs are now rotating. And it really is as simple as that to create quite a sophisticated animation very quickly by changing the layers in Illustrator and importing them into After Effects. Now, one useful thing to note is here, we've got a black outline for our brain, but if we later decided that we actually wanted that to be a different color, we can actually come back into the Illustrator file. I've still got it open here. We can come to our brain outline, select this layer, and we can change the color in Illustrator for this file. So we're gonna set that to white to reflect the color of the rest of the cogs. Click OK, see it changes to white here in Illustrator. And if we now file and we just save this file, so we haven't saved as and created a new file, we've merely updated the existing Illustrator file and then come back to our After Effects screen, we can notice that the color now updates to reflect the Illustrator file. And that's because it's reading in the Illustrator file into our composition. So it's a nice way to quickly update and make modifications in Illustrator that auto update in After Effects. So I hope that was useful. The same approach can be used for pretty much any vector graphic that you download from places like Vecteasy online, just to split the layers out, import them as we have done, create a new composition from those layers, and then you can animate those individual layers inside After Effects to create quite complicated animations, but nice and quickly and easily. So I hope that was useful. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and look forward to seeing you in future tutorials.